Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about all of the apps that I use in a day. So let's get started at half past six when I wake up with the trusty iPhone alarm clock sound. Then I take off my Aura smart ring that I sleep with, put it on charge on the dock, and I'll occasionally check my sleep stats on the app just to see what the quality of my sleep overnight was. Then I go to the bathroom for my morning wee, and while I'm on the toilet, I open up Notion on my phone, uh, and I fill out my daily check-in. This asks me a bunch of questions, including what I dreamt that night, because I'm trying to remember my dreams. It asks me what one thing I'm gonna focus on for the day, my highlight of the day, and it asks me the question, what under my control will make this day better. And I find that that just gets me off to a nice start. Then I get off the toilet, undress, and while I'm naked, I stand on my Withings Smart Scale, which syncs to my Apple Health Kit, and that lets me weigh myself every day. I then open Spotify on my phone, I set it to play whatever, these days lots of songs by John Mayer, put the volume on full blast, and I head over to the shower. By around 6.45, I'm out of the shower. On my way to the bedroom, I will tell Siri, which is in the HomePod in the kitchen and in the living room, to play something like the morning acoustic playlist on Apple Music. And yes, I do have both Spotify and Apple Music, just because I like being able to play music through Siri. I really wish the HomePod worked nicely with Spotify. Then at seven o'clock, I get into the car and I drive to work. Now on the drive to work, usually I'm either listening to an audiobook on Audible at double speed, or listening to podcasts on Castro at double speed, or if I'm feeling really lazy, I will just listen to some random songs on Spotify. Very, very occasionally, if I'm in a very reflective mood, I will just drive in silence. And if I'm listening to a podcast or an audiobook that I wanna take notes on, I actually use the Drafts app on my Apple Watch to dictate notes into. I get to work around eight o'clock, grab a morning cup of coffee, change into my scrubs, and then there are four apps that I use a lot throughout the morning. The first one is Medic Bleep, which is like a secure communication platform that the NHS uses. Secondly, I use Google on Safari quite a lot to Google stuff that, you know, I need to look up. If I'm prescribing a drug, I'll often look up the doses in the BNF, the British National Formulary, which is like a national app with the drug doses, which is quite handy. And if I need to give someone antibiotics, every hospital has their own kind of local guidelines that sort of which antibiotics you give someone based on what sort of bugs are growing in the local area. So we've got an app called MicroGuide for that. By around 11 o'clock, the initial jobs for the morning are done, so I take a break from saving lives and I'll usually bust open my iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard and I'll start my daily note in Rome research. Some days I like doing the morning pages thing on Rome where you just kind of write three pages of whatever kind of comes to mind. But these days I've got this challenge for myself that every day I'm gonna write a thousand words. And so I usually make a start on my writing in Rome. And again, if you wanna find out more about how I use Rome, I've got like six videos in my workflow series on Nebula, details in the video description uh, about specifically how I use Rome and how it fits into my workflow. Once I've done my morning journaling practice thingy on Rome, then I'll normally open Todoist. And I usually check that a couple of times a day because that's my to-do list app of choice uh, to see if there's any anything urgent that needs doing during the day. Then up until lunch, I'm saving more lives and just kind of spending time on my iPad, productive downtime when there's not much going on on the wards. And then around one o'clock, I will have a lunch break. These days I take these Tupperware type things to work so I can warm them for lunch and dinner and sometimes breakfast. These are from the fitness kitchen in Leeds and it's because I'm trying to track my macros so I can one day become a Gymshark athlete. So I'll usually go to the doctor's office, I'll warm up this for three minutes in the microwave and then I will sit at the computer with my iPad Pro in front of me and Notion and Rome open on the Windows PC at work. Just before eating, I'll look at the macros in the Tupperware and I will add those to my fitness pal, which is the app that I'm using to track my calories. And then assuming there's nothing going on in the ward that needs my attention over lunch, I'll usually sit in the doctor's office and do some more writing in Rome and in Notion, um, either on my iPad or on the computer. How do I choose between the two? Well, usually I'm writing stuff in Rome when my writing or my ideas or a video plan is in the embryonic or in the fetal development stage. And then I'll usually transition it over to Notion to sort of write the final script for the video or the final version of the article or blog post. So that's sort of how I use them together. Obviously at random intervals throughout the day, I'm also checking my email on Superhuman, which is the email client that I use on my iPhone and iPad. I'm also replying to messages from my team on Slack, replying to messages from other school friends and university friends through WhatsApp. And of course, scrolling through Instagram and Twitter randomly. I'm trying to do less of that, but it just always inevitably ends up happening. Assuming my lunch break was uninterrupted with bleeps, usually I'll head back to the ward around two o'clock with another cup of coffee. And at some point during the day, I'll usually make it a point to kind of put on one of those masks and snap a selfie of myself using the default camera app on the iPhone. But then I import that photo straight into Adobe Lightroom and I will edit it using 
a color grade filter preset thing that I've kind of customized that I've been using for the last two years, which just makes the images look a little bit nicer. And occasionally while I'm at work, I will try and come up with some kind of pithy sounding tweet. And then I'll tweet that, by the way, follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you haven't yet, if you want to see this sort of stuff. Then more saving lives from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And then at 4 p.m. I'll hand over to the evening team and then I will leave work. So I'll change out of my scrubs, back into my clothing, put the AirPods in, resume the thing that I was listening to on Audible or Castro or occasionally Spotify. And I'll get in the car and set the direction for home on Google Maps because that lets me kind of navigate and tells me what the fastest route home is. On days where I'm being my higher self, I will immediately change into my workout clothing like I did today. And I will do my home workout, which I track on Google Sheets. Um, I used to track my workouts on Notion, but then I got this online personal trainer and he uses Google Sheets for them. So I was like, okay, fine, we'll track it on Google Sheets. So I'll try and do some sort of home workout then. And of course, while working out, I'm continuing listening to whatever I was listening to on Audible. Uh, earlier today, it was uh, Lord of Chaos, which is book number seven of the Wheel of Time series, which I'm listening to on double speed. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'll put a video in, in the video description about my favorite fantasy books. Um, that would be the order that I recommend listening to these fantasy books in if you want to get into fantasy for the first time. So that's an ideal day. Like very occasionally I will get home, change into my gym clothes and do a workout. But usually I just end up sitting on the sofa and just randomly scrolling through Twitter and Instagram for an annoyingly long period of time. Once I get bored of that, I move over from the sofa to this desk where I've got my MacBook Pro connected via a USB-C cable to this huge ass 49 inch LG monitor with my fancy ass keyboard, links in the video description to all of this stuff. And usually the first thing I do is I touch base with my team again on Slack to see if there's anything that I need to do for the evening. And usually in the morning while I was on Notion on the toilet, I'll have set my highlight for the day. So for example, today it's to film this very video. So then I kind of get to doing the thing that is my highlight for the day after work. And on days where I haven't pre-decided what I'm gonna do, I'll just have a look through Notion, have a look through Todoist, and I'll have a look at the sponsored video schedule along with our Skillshare class release schedule to figure out, okay, what's the best use of my time for these next few hours. Then once I've decided I'm gonna film a video, it usually takes around 15 minutes to get the lights, camera, and everything set up. So while doing all of that, Obviously I can multitask, so occasionally I'll play some music on the HomePod, or more often I'll have my AirPods in and I'll be listening to my fantasy audiobook on Audible. And while filming, I usually have Notion open, so I've got it in a little window at the edge of my screen, so hopefully you can't see it on the camera, or I'll have my iPad Pro in front of me just kind of next to the lens, so I can see a vague outline of the video. And again, that's all done in Notion. Again, more details about that in the workflow series. In an ideal world, I'll have finished all the filming that I need to do by 9 p.m., but it is... 9.40 today, so I think I'm gonna finish this one by 10 p.m. So at some point, I will grab another Tupperware from the fridge, put it in the microwave for three minutes, and that would be my dinner sorted for the day. Of course, I'm gonna put the calories into my fitness pal, and then assuming I've done all my filming for the day and I've still got a reasonable chunk of time in which to be productive, I will try, when I'm being my higher self, to do some music practice these days I'm going through Justin Guitar's online kind of guitar teaching course, which is how I taught myself guitar initially like five years ago. But now I'm trying to learn music theory to get better at music production. So I'll usually kind of practice a little bit of that. Or if I'm feeling like doing music, but I don't want to do deliberate practice, uh, I'll often just bring up some chords for a particular song using the ultimate guitar tabs app on my iPad or on my iPhone, I'll just kind of play a few songs. And occasionally I will film this on my iPhone with the front facing camera, uh, record it and post it on Instagram, on IGTV. At around 9.30 after doing a bit of music practice, again, when I'm being my higher self, then I will think, you know what, I'm gonna do some productive entertainment and I'll watch a documentary on Curiosity Stream, obviously on at double speed because I don't do anything at single speed. I'll watch a documentary on Curiosity Stream who are very kindly sponsoring this video. They're the world's largest documentary streaming subscription platform with thousands of documentaries ranging from all sorts of subjects. So often I will pick a, a documentary that looks kind of interesting to me and I'll kind of watch it at double, occasionally more than double speed uh, as a way of like entertaining myself, but also kind of learning stuff at the same time. The great thing about Curiosity Stream is that it's not just these documentaries you get access to if you sign up. You also get free access to Nebula, which is the independent streaming platform that me and a bunch of other creators are making. And over on Nebula, I've got a ton of exclusive videos that you won't find on YouTube, including I think 15 videos now in my workflow series, which I've referenced a few times, where I deep dive into like the really nerdy details about how I use these various apps, how they fit into my workflow to make me happier, healthier, and more productive. Curiosity Stream is $3 a month or $20 a year. So this bundle of Curiosity Stream and Nebula is literally the best deal in streaming right now. If that sounds up your street, if you wanna see more of my exclusive content, head over to curiositystream.com forward slash Ali and use the coupon code Ali at checkout and then you'll get an email with, with your Nebula account details and you can watch to your heart's content. At this point, it's usually around 10 p.m. and I think about winding down for the night. So initially I say, hey Siri, set relax. And then all the lights go warm and I'll usually turn on night shift on my desktop as well because 
Apparently blocking out blue light is a good way of kind of getting your body ready for sleep. At least that's what Matthew Walker says in the book, Why We Sleep, which is very good. By the way, if you're wondering about that magic trick, that is the Philips Hue light bulbs in action and I've got different scenes. So, hey Siri, set fire and frost. And that would be like my filming setup, which is a sort of... Okay, living room sets fire and frost. Siri's a bit talkative, it's a bit annoying, but that would be my kind of video video shooting setup. And then if I'm feeling particularly decadent, I will say something like, hey Siri, play relaxing piano jazz music. Now playing some chill piano jazz. Hey Siri, stop. So then with the lights and the music mood set, I will brush my teeth, wash my face, cleanse, moisturize. I'll put on my hour ring again for the night. I will take off my Apple watch and put it on charge. I will set the alarm for 6.30 on my iPhone and put it on the wireless charger on the chest of drawers that is literally on the opposite side of the bedroom to my bed so that I'm not allowed to have my phone in bed. And then usually I will get into bed uh, and while I'm in bed, if I've still got any, any writing left to do for my thousand words of writing for the day, I will finish them off using Roam or Notion. And then within my daily check-in on Notion, I will fill in some more questions. So one of the questions is, what are your three biggest wins for the day? What are three things that you're grateful for? And my favorite thing, this is something called homework for life that I've started doing for the last two weeks. That's where I ask myself, what is the most story worthy moment of my day? So I'll think about a moment that I could potentially turn into a story of some sort or an anecdote, and I will kind of write a few sentences about it in Notion. Uh, and I've been tracking this since like, I don't know, the beginning of May. So yeah, that's just a way of reflecting on my day in a way that I've never really done before, but I find that that really kind of helps me. At this point, usually it's about 11 p.m. and I'm thinking, okay, I should really sleep now. So I will turn my iPad off, I'll chuck it onto the floor. And if I'm feeling particularly tired, I will just turn the fan on. I use a Dyson fan thingy because they look cool and it's quiet and nice. I'll turn the fan on and just go directly to sleep by asking Siri to turn the lights off in the bedroom because I've got Philips here in the bedroom as well. Or if I'm not feeling particularly sleepy, but I know that I should be in bed anyway, I will grab my Kindle, which I always have on my bedside table. and I'll turn the brightness right the way down so that it doesn't strain my eyes too much. And then usually I'll read some kind of fiction book. These days I'm reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. I think that's what it's called. It's pretty good so far. It's quite an educational read as well. The only problem with this book thing is that occasionally if like a book is really, really, really riveting, then I will just read it until like four o'clock in the morning and then be completely sleep deprived for work the next day, which is probably not the sort of thing I want to admit on camera. So those were all the apps that I use in a standard day when I'm at work and then trying to be, you know, vaguely healthy and productive in the evenings. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there's a playlist over here that has more app themed videos about my favorite apps on the iPhone, the iPad and my Mac. So if you're into this whole app thing, you should check those out and you should definitely sign up to Curiosity Stream so you can see my workflow series where we deep dive full nerd level about more of these apps. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.